Hi everybody, welcome to the Deep Dive with Simply Scuba. We're looking at dive knives today. Most divers, when choosing a dive knife, they just look at the, the style and the shape of it and they basically make their decision on that. But you'll notice on most dive knives, three little numbers or a few more numbers stamped or printed into where the metal and the handle uh, sort of attaches. That number is quite important and the care of your knife going forwards uh, and why some dive knives are so much more expensive this is what that number really denotes. So let's dive a little bit deeper and look at those numbers and really what they mean. 304 stainless steel is a pretty popular choice for marine metals. Um, I mean, this, for example, so this is the Aqualung Squeeze range. 304 is pretty strong and corrosion resistant. Um, it's not rust proof, just rust resistant. Um, it will rust over time when exposed to seawater and then subsequently not cleaned because it still contains iron. What it does contain is a higher amount of chromium compared to standard carbon steels. So it takes a bit longer for the rust to form, but it does require a clean after a dive so that it's dry and doesn't rust. 304 is quite often your cheapest option. Um, if it is really, really cheap and it doesn't mention 304, it just says stainless steel, then be careful. It might not even be 304, it's just stainless steel. It might be stainless steel, but not marine grade stainless steel. The actual word stainless doesn't always mean that it's never going to rust because it that doesn't really exist. Even with 304, you still need to keep it clean between dives. 316 is similar to 304, but it has an extra element, 2% molybdenum. I don't know how to pronounce it, but it gives a higher resistance to corrosion for salty water. It means that it takes a lot longer to rust, but it still will rust eventually. Um, but it is more expensive. It's harder to put that molybdenum stuff in it. So it's a little less popular as a material to use. And even though it's more resistant, yeah, it still needs to be clean after a dive to prevent rust from forming. But if you forget every now and then, then it won't just flash rust. You've got to really sort of expose it for longer periods than standard 304. You just need to spray it with fresh water uh, and just make sure it dries between dives thoroughly to prevent any rust from forming. 420 steel you can find on some dive knives like the Aqualung Argonaut Stunt. Uh, instead of being naturally corrosion resistant, it's a much stronger metal. So it holds an edge really well, but it will rust a bit faster than 304 or 316. And what they did to combat that is to give it a black coating to cover the surface of the metal up. It does make it more expensive because it's got all those extra processes going into it, but for longevity, so you don't have to sharpen it, quite so often, it is quite a good choice. Just be sure to clean that leading cutting edge where the bare metal is actually exposed. This is a bit of a balancing act. When you make the metal harder, you make it a bit more susceptible to rust, so you coat it. It does make for a good strong dive knife, but you do need to take care of that cutting edge between dives. Titanium, uh, like on the Atomic TI-6 dive knife, is a great choice. Titanium is light, but it's also very strong. But most importantly, it doesn't contain any iron, so it cannot rust. It also holds a pretty good edge as well for cutting. Most dive knives are either going to be alpha or beta titanium, uh, something like TI-6AL4V, uh, because it's not pure titanium. It often has aluminium, hence the AL, and vanadium, the V part, mixed in to stabilize it and to harden the metal itself. It is substantially more expensive though, but you do need to weigh up an expensive knife that you don't really need to worry about ever against a cheaper dive knife that if you forget to wash and dry it will rust very quickly. 
Ceramic is the latest, and you only find it on a select few, like this uh, Mara's line cutter. Ceramic is very cheap, it's very light, and of course it's ceramic, so it can't rust. And if you've ever broken a dinner plate, you'll know just how sharp that edge can be. The downside is, is that it is quite fragile in itself. You can't have one big blade of ceramic because that would just snap. But in the protective design of a line cutter, it is protective from twisting and turning so it can slice through ropes and lines with minimal maintenance. If the blade does chip or does dull over time, it does need to be replaced. I don't think there's an easy way to actually sharpen ceramic yet. So they were the most common metals you'll find. 304 is usually the most popular. It's pretty cheap and it gets the job done, but it will rust if you don't take care of it. 316 is a little bit better but a bit more expensive. The most expensive though is titanium, but it does require the least maintenance and ceramic is the new one on the block, uh, but only really works in line cutters. But what do you prefer? I mean, personally, most of my knives are titanium just because if I forget to wash it, it's not the end of the world. Um, let us know down in the comments below. All of these are available on simplyscuba.com. If you want to take a closer look, there's gonna be links down in the description below. Thank you for watching everybody. And of course, safe diving. Thank you.